All right, guys, today we are talking about the SRK's little brother, the SRKC. So this blade is very interesting to me because I think of this blade a lot, like it has very large shoes to fill. The SRK is such a fantastic, well done, well made knife that it's hard to have anything like a compact version come in and feel the same. And that's how I ultimately feel about the SRKC. Now, I will say this in the beginning, or as an intro if you are looking for a budget blade around the price of something like a gerber prodigy gerber strong arm uh, k bar bk18 the srkc is a very venerable option it's right around the same size same intended function same intended use and it is very durable very capable and overall once again i would much rather take this over something like a gerber strong arm or prodigy um, because it just is a little bit more comfortable to me and a little bit more uh, well refined. That being said, as far as this goes in comparison to the SRK, the original, I would still take the SRK over this, not only due to the bigger size, but I think that there are a few changes that they made to the SRKC that are not my favorite. The first is, and I feel like I complain about it a lot, but I definitely like thicker handles. When they made the SRKC, they really tapered this handle to be quite thin. And so while it does feel a little bit more comfortable now that I've gotten warmed up to this blade, in the beginning, it felt very thin and it still kind of does, especially on the back, kind of where your pinky and ring finger wrap around. It feels very thin. And overall, when a blade feels thin in the hand, it tends to fatigue your hand more because your hand is compensating by gripping the knife a little bit tighter. So that's why I like nice full grips. Obviously, you don't want to hold on to like a big tube, but you do want something there so that you know that you're holding on to your knife and you don't have to hold it overly hard to compensate. Um, so there's that. Second thing I dislike about this blade, and this is probably much to the chagrin of many of my viewers, this blade, when they did the SRKC, they changed the grind back to a full, or not full, but a flat grind. So the original SK5 SRKs were a hollow grind, and because the blade was well built, that hollow grind never really presented an issue of breakage or easily damaged. Uh, overall, it was a good performing grind, and the thing that I like about hollow grinds is they're very thin at the cutting edge so they're very easy to get on and just start feather sticking these flat grinds are not quite as easy and not, are not quite as slicey so while it may be arguably more durable uh, I do really miss that feature or that ability that the knife had to be very slicey and feather stick so well. So while, it's, like I said, it's not bad and the blade is just fine as far as durability goes, I definitely miss that feature. In addition to that too, the one thing I will say, and I believe that this is more of a new cold steel thing as opposed to the SRKC purely, but I found that the coating and even the uh, overall like, uh, like brand, like the cold steel has already started to kind of fade away on this blade. The Taiwan has started to fade away and the coating itself is already in high wear areas starting to rub off. So definitely not quite as durable as the old coating for the SRKs. Um, I can't really speak because I didn't get an original SRKC, but I do believe that even they likely had a more durable coating than this one. Anyways, you know, it's not the end of the world. You just want to be kind of mindful of that, especially because the SRKCs are only made in um, SK5 high carbon, which performs very similarly to 1095. So if you do have an exposed blade, it is prone to rusting. So just keeping that in mind, it's not a huge deal breaker for me. It is a little bit disappointing though to see. As far as the blade performance goes, this is probably the most promising thing. It really is quite a good performer for its size. It batons well, as you guys can see, even larger pieces of wood that this has difficulty spanning. It will still break apart very well due to that flat grind being so much of a wedge. It also does a pretty good job at feather sticking. Not as good as a hollow grind, but certainly not bad at all. It does have a nice edge to it. It does a great job as well at doing things like notching, carving, 
shaping and any of those tasks. So overall, this blade is definitely a certified survival knife. And from my opinion and my experience, you know, it's not what the SRK was as far as a survival knife, but it's still more than durable. It's not gonna break on you. And if you are really looking for that smaller four and a half inch blade, as opposed to the closer six inch blade that the original SRK has, this is definitely a venerable option. Um, in addition to that too, it does have the classic Cold Steel Securex sheath, which is one of my more favorites. As I talked about with my Falcon even A1 review, you know, the Securex sheath is a very versatile sheath. You can pop off the little belt loop and you can run this thing scout style. You can run it and attach it to LBE, LBV. Um, you can attach it to PALS webbing, MOLLE, all that kind of stuff. So really quite a versatile sheath and makes the uh, blade easier to carry and therefore easier to have if you need it in a pinch. Overall, I would still probably recommend the original SRK over the SRKC, but if you do need the compact size or if you're looking in that kind of smaller four to four and a half inch blade length, this is a reasonable option, especially for a budget price. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.